So now in this video, we're going to make a current source with an LM358 op amp. So nice thing about this op amp is the output will go all the way to the negative rail. So we can use a single supply right here, which is just a regular DC uh, power supply. And uh, it's set at 15 volts right now. And so it's a current source. The output is going to output a certain amount of current based on the voltage that we input to the non-inverting input. We'll provide that with the trim pot. It'll give us a fraction of the power supply voltage. And this resistor right here, you just take the uh, voltage that you set there and divide it by the resistance you set here. I'm gonna use a one kilo ohm resistor, 1000 ohm resistor. That means we'll get one one thousandth of an amp for every volt. So one milliamp per volt and we'll see that works out pretty nicely with uh, this circuit so let's uh, slide this over look at the pin layout so the inverting pin is actually pin 2 top pin here is the output so the inverting pin that's where we want the resistor right there and we can do uh, various loads but uh, the uh, inverting input we'll get to the loads later we can take a jumper here. So I got a jumper going to the middle pin there. It's probably a little more out of the way right there. So I'll set it uh, right there. And I actually set that resistor to the output. There we go. Now it's to pin two, the inverting input. And then the jumper there to the non-inverting input. And so the load can be uh, pretty much anything we want. If it blocks too much voltage or has too much resistance, you won't get the full amount of current, of course. But otherwise, you can vary the load and you'll have a predictable amount of current. So now, we'll grab the multimeter and look at the voltage. As we saw, it was 15 volts, so it's gonna be around seven and a half volts, somewhere around there. First, we'll look at the rail voltage and uh, just shy of 15 volts, because we got a little bit of losses through the uh, resistance and the wires. There you can see 7.8. So I could adjust it to 7.5, but uh, this is close enough, 7.8. And now we will go and set the meter to measure milliamps of current. And we expect about 7.8 milliamps of current coming out of the output there if we connect this other probe to the resistor. So right now, the uh, multimeter is kind of a load, a zero ohm resistance load. But there you can see we have the uh, voltage. So it's not perfect, but it is pretty close, uh, really close. Now we're going to change the load. We're going to take an LED. So the output is more positive. And uh, so the long lead, the anode, is going to go to the output. Short lead, the cathode, is going to go up one row right there. In fact, I'm going to move this resistor off to the side a little bit. So it's a little easier to see. So now, again, we're going to measure the current. So... The output's more positive, and so the red probe's going to go over to there, and I kind of bumped it, but uh, there you can see the same amount of current. So we can vary the load if we keep adding LEDs. Sooner or later, though, so long lead towards the output, short lead up one row, and uh, just because we're cycling back through the meter, and uh, the current is holding steady. And uh, I do have one more LED. I think this might be a little too much. But uh, we'll take a look real quick. And uh, so yeah, I did go down. That was a little too much load. But uh, you can see, as long as we don't have too much, current holds steady. And we'll go right there. Now another thing that's nice about these op amps, you can actually short circuit the output. And uh, so we got about 20 milliamps right there. That's what it appears to be limiting to, but it's going up slightly as it warms up. But that's the nice thing about the op amps. The only time I know that I damage these, I'm pretty sure I swapped out one op amp for another, and the power supply pins uh, did not go into the same spot. So I powered uh, pins that I shouldn't have. Other than that, these seem uh, pretty robust. I did fry some when I accidentally put them, uh, replaced them with uh, op amps that had a different power supply pin. Since this is such a simple circuit, we're going to go over some other stuff. First off, as I said before, we used a 1 kilo ohm resistor because it made the math really easy. For every volt we set, we'll have 1 milliamp of current. That's because these two pins are trying to 
uh, hold the same voltage, the uh, output actually outputs what it needs to to hold those two to the same voltage within its uh, abilities and so the voltage we have there it wants to set there so ultimately that voltage will be across the resistor so one kilo ohm makes it easy one milliamp for every volt we set we could use half the resistance for twice the current or we could use twice the resistance for half of the current so now that we made sure and covered the resistor, there's also these numbers that I pulled off a data sheet. So of course I copied this, I could have made a mistake or whatever. Their numbers may not be right. They do corrections on data sheets uh, quite a bit and whatnot. But in any case, I just did a Google search of LM358 and I got the, uh, I believe it's the Texas Instrument uh, data sheet. And so it said the B versions they can handle some more voltage so 36 volts this is the recommended uh, you can go higher but you would want to do that for brief periods of time but in any case you should keep it under the uh, voltage that you see here I don't have the B this is the N LM 358 N and so it's gonna fall into 3 to 30 volts I haven't found what the N means yet but it's some slight uh, variation but in any case we already saw we can short circuit the output we can take the output whether it's high or low go directly to one rail or the other and it will limit current and so it should be safe to do so uh, indefinitely unlimited so I haven't ever done that for long periods of time but I have shorted the output uh, a number of times and had no problem so far as I said before the only time I damaged the uh, op amp was when I accidentally put the power supply pins into the wrong spot and so in any case the, uh, so make sure you check the pin layout for the power supplies go. I forgot to mention that while we were looking at this earlier. Pin number 8, the top right pin, you can see the orange jumper. That goes to the positive rail. And since we're using a single supply DC, pin number 4 down there is going to the negative rail. And uh, that's our ground too. So we could have ground as a halfway point. But in any case, we looked at the output current. And when we were sourcing... This was more positive, remember the resistor was going to ground, and uh, when I put it to the negative rail, we were limited to about 20 milliamps of current. So that's typical, so it could be higher, but it gave me the uh, minimum and the typical. Of course, for sinking, current's going the other way, so you got a negative symbol there. I meant to put a space and add uh, MA for milliamp after the number, but I forgot, but I did do it uh, down here. And so, uh, sinking. The uh, output gets to the negative rail uh, much more. That's why we can go down to zero volts, use a single supply. It doesn't go all the way to the positive rail. So it has more problems going to the positive rail than it does to the negative rail. So it is easier for it to sink current and thus there's a higher number. It's a little harder for it to uh, source current, positive to negative. And so we got some lower numbers there. So that's not too surprising. But in any case, as always, this is a nice data sheet for this uh, component here. Some of them are hard to find. The 2N2222 is very hard to find, which is odd because it's an old component, but uh, especially in the TO92 package. But uh, most of the components I have, if I do a Google search of the part number I see on them, I have really no problem finding the data sheet. So make sure you always look up the data sheet. Just use uh, what I write and what other people tell you as a starting point and make sure you look at the data sheet verify things and also look at your test conditions because they give you numbers for different voltages and stuff so in any case that was just some bonus uh, stuff it is actually kind of important though since I use this op amp so much that uh, we all know these numbers as best as we can so in any case hope you found it interesting thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video